so we've been doing these videos since what December yep December that's when we started them and back in that very first one I said in the NBA finals the Miami <laughs> Heat would play the Oklahoma City Thunder now honestly I don't think I'm a genius for saying <laughs> this anybody thinks logically would be like the two most athletic teams their guys usually don't get hurt they'll probably make it through without injury Oklahoma City did Miami barely got through with the Bosch injury but he came back and they were able to get to the finals so here we are Robin all right uh the picks were awesome the the first thing I want to talk about is you know I, I think a lot of people predicted this uh it was obvious without saying it was it was pretty obvious but um I want to talk about LeBron James' performance in Game Six uh, of the playoffs. This is one of the most inspirational uh, performances uh, performances I've ever seen. I, I've never seen LeBron uh, play like that. You know, it, it, it felt like Michael Jordan took his heart and put it inside LeBron James. It, it really felt like that. It just felt like he had tunnel vision, like nothing else mattered. Every single thing was on that game. I mean, you just look in his eyes. He definitely had the eye of the tiger in that game. And uh, you know, that was personally for me that. It might have been his best game ever, you know, probably even more so than the Detroit game, considering what's at stake and everything he's been through and uh, just a serious gut check. And I think I think Miami is going to win this series, to tell you the truth, because Bosch has his confidence back. And uh, I just think too much experience. You know, Oklahoma City is a great team. They probably are the better team on paper. But, you know, they're just so young. I'm just worried about the age factor. You know, you got 22, 23, 23 with the big three. Uh, but, you know, it's going to be an awesome finals. You know, you got the big three versus the big three, and uh, it, it should definitely go down to the wires. So, yeah, I mean, I, I can't wait. I'm really excited. I don't know if Oklahoma City has such a big an advantage on paper because they're really virtually similar in that I don't know if they're not similar, but they have three guys that are really, really good, although uh, Oklahoma City only has, like, one guy that's on that tier beneath them, and that's a Baca, whereas you could argue that Miami has Udonis and Battier. Uh, well, I, I think Oklahoma City is a little bit more well-rounded. I, I think, you know, guys like Mike Miller, Shane Battier, uh, just, I just think they have a lot of guys that are very one-dimensional on Miami. They really can't do much on the offensive end, but just spot up. Well, I think Oklahoma City just has more, you know, more depth. And more guys with versatility, like uh, forget, forgetting about uh, Cephalosha, a guy like that. He's exactly like Shane Battier. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? I mean, <laughs> you just you just rip Shane Battier and bring up his clone. I, I, I think he's much better at taking it to the basket than, than Battier. Battier just looks like he doesn't have anything as far as you know uh, penetration goes. But uh, I think Ubaka is probably the X factor. He's uh, I think he gave the Lakers a lot of problems. He's just got great length. A uh, great defender. You know, he, he's more. I, I, I don't think he's a great defender. I think he's a well, great. I, I think he's a great a defender, but he could also shots. I think, I think he's, his length scared Bynum. Like I think it scared the shit out of Bynum, and that's why I thought he played like such a so poorly in that series. I think he's a great shot blocker, but he goes for shot fakes way too much. And when a Chris Bosh's go-to move is shot fake one dribble to the left and pull up. How many times do you think we're going to see Ibaka get bit by that? <laughs> Probably yeah. multiple. Uh, Pau Gasol. He made, no, Pau Gasol made Ibaka look like a really good defender. But I, don't, I really don't think Pau Gasol was in that series. Neither was Bynum. There's something going on there. In Lakertown that we don't know about. But he came out of that series thinking, oh, Serge Ibaka... <laughs> Good defender, no. Uh, he's got some work to do. He has definitely got the potential to become one, but he really doesn't have the. Well, he's, he's still very young. I'm, I'm yeah, he's 22. Uh, well, but to talk about the uh, the experience factor, I mean, th- this is LeBron's third finals. Le- Le- Wade's already won the MVP. You know, Bosch is a uh, true professional, uh, a veteran. Uh, and, and as far as the coaching thing, you can't really say this is a coaching mismatch. That kind of cancels itself out with this. Uh, I wouldn't say one, either guy has the advantage over the other. I mean, what do you think about the experience? I just think Oklahoma City is just so young. Uh, Eric Spolster has a much more polished defense. 
uh, they run a lot more set plays, whereas OKC, it's either... Although the main thing, that the difference in that when they one started to win four straight against San Antonio is that, one, they put Cephalosha on Parker. Two, they started running... Russell West broke off of pick and rolls more, and three, Kevin Durant started to come off screens more. Uh, but other than setting a single pick and a guy coming off, our ISOs, their offense isn't really that varied. I mean, you'd agree with that, wouldn't you? Uh, no, definitely. It's more of like a summer league kind of style. I mean, they, they really, in, in game five against uh, San Antonio, that's the only time where I really saw – you know them really go out with go at it with the pick and roll with uh, Westbrook and uh, Durant. I mean, Harden really isos a lot of those big shots he hit was just straight straight up ISOs. But yeah. I, I, I mean, would you agree that uh, Harden is the X factor? I mean, the dude is just. Um, it depends. He, he's he's proven that he he's not just a great penetrator. You know, he gets the ball in the open court. He's pretty. He's good. He's an awesome finisher. But he's proven that he's also clutch too. I mean, the dude can make some, you know, big time shots. Yeah, it, it depends on who they stick on him. Because again, they have they have not had they have not had to face a team that has had a great perimeter defender. And Miami's got three of them in the starting lineup. Battier, Wade, and uh, LeBron. Right? Yeah, uh, it depends on. I would imagine those would be the three guys taking taking Westbrook. Durant and Harden. I would imagine that Wade will probably get Westbrook. Obviously, Dur- LeBron on Durant. So I guess that leaves Battier on Harden. And that's going to be interesting because Harden has not had to. Has he even faced anybody as at least a good defender in Battier? Well, against Dallas, he had like Jason Kidd and Vince Carter trying to guard him and, <laughs> and he pretty much annihilated them. That's and then crazy. against the Lakers, it was a. Um, I mean, who who was it? What was it? Uh, shit, it wasn't Blake and it wasn't uh, Ramon Sessions. Was it Bryant? Was it, was it Kobe? Yeah, because Bryant's not good what? anymore. It might must. I mean, Kobe's not the defender he once was. But. No, even though he still makes the fucking all defense team <laughs> when it should be Wade's spot. Uh, uh, San Antonio was it? Uh, I, I guess it was Kawhi Leonard that was that was checking uh, Harden. No, he was on Durant. He was on Durant, right? Yeah. And he, he, I would count him in that same cloud as a Baca. He they're, has, put, they're putting their best defenders on Westbrook and uh, Durant, so that, that's what frees Harden up. But uh, Miami has enough of those guys to they go. Got, they got they got three to match the big three. That's that's yeah. the big difference. Yeah, I yeah. Don't, and I don't know how it's going to work. That that's literally why I I don't feel comfortable making a prediction of this series because I've not seen. I, I would definitely go with Miami. I, I mean. Uh, uh, the one thing that concerns me about Miami is, is Wade. Um, I'm worried about his health. I'm worried about you know how effective he's going to be, uh, especially guarding Russell Westbrook. I think that's going to kill his energy for the offensive end. What do you think about that? Not if he keeps getting his knee drained every halftime. <laughs> uh, that, 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 how does this happen? Like every, every single game, first half, awful. Comes out of the locker room, great. He, he, if you've seen his whole career, he's really into pacing himself. He's, he's a great defender, but you know he's only when he wants to be. He has to be this series. Uh, man, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Westbrook will probably be able to get around Wade due to the knee thing. I don't know how that would be if that wasn't there. Uh. Durant and LeBron is probably the most intriguing. Cause I, don't think, I don't think either one is going to shut either one down. It's they're, they're both going to get there with their numbers. No, because all LeBron's going to have to do is post that bean pole up, and he'll probably get easy buckets that way. And well, I mean, Durant's, uh, Durant's an okay defender. He's not. You want to consider him great? You, th- you think he can stop LeBron backing down? No, no. I'm just I'm just saying in general. I mean, do you regard him as a uh, premier defender? I would say he has the potential to be with his length, but he hasn't exactly learned it yet. And he says he wants to. Uh, working with LeBron in the off season is obviously going to help with that. And he was a little bit better this year, but he is not where he needs to be to be considered a stopper. 
uh, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm I'm baffled. The series baffles me. I don't think either benches are going to matter except for like every game somebody will have double figures on each team. They have to. Uh, God. But how how important is this series for uh for LeBron? <laughs> you want to be honest? If yeah. if if I thought that uh, he wouldn't be back here next year, it'd be really important. But I think he's going to be back here again next year because uh, the Celtics are going to break up. Rose is out till February, and he'll right. be slowed. And then you don't see anything happening with the Knicks. So if, no. yeah, you. So so it's, it's pretty much. I mean, it's pretty much going to be Oklahoma City and Miami in the finals for probably the next two seasons until James Harden leaves. Uh, or Ibaka, or they both could leave. And, uh, it, yeah, I mean, uh, with, with with LeBron, I mean, I mean, he, he lost the NBA finals in 2007. And then last year, you know, it's pretty well documented how people still bring it up that the Miami Heat, they had all the talent in the world, but they still couldn't get it done. Even though you do make it to the finals, people still remember, you know, the like just like Kobe Bryant said, he said, you know, second place just means you're the first loser. So, you know, I don't think either team should be complacent with just getting getting here. This, there's just a lot at stake and uh, very, very important for, for, for LeBron's legacy and for his, uh, you know, his status right now. I just I just think a lot a lot is on the line. But he, he seemed more than any other time. He just seems to be a little bit more feisty. A little, he just seems like he wants it more than last year, and and even even going back to two thousand seven as well. Yeah, okay, now you got my mind rolling. That is true. Uh, you know, you could replace okay. Oh, you could say okay. See, this year is really similar to Miami last year because they kind of gotten to this point on talent. There was nobody that could stop them. They're mature enough now to know what to do. And they haven't... Man. Damn it. It's so hard to think about. Damn. Well, no, that's a good point. Miami had a pretty easy ride last uh, yeah, and year. Yeah, I okay. think the Bosch... Like, if Bosch had been healthy, that would have uh, cakewalked to the finals again. I think the Bosch injury is going to... is While at the time... Seemed like a huge disadvantage. I think it's going to end up. I think it's going to end up being a good, better advantage because uh, LeBron and Wade had to learn how to play off each other more. Uh, all right, no, that's, that's a great point. I, I think it really made LeBron stronger. You know, they had two serious gut check games. They had to go through hell, and uh, so, yeah, so that's going to help them. And uh, the, the thing about Bosch in the press conference, uh, LeBron was actually open. To Bosch actually coming off the bench because he was so effective in uh, Game Seven. What, what do you think about that? Uh, he would, he would be the best guy coming off the bench in this series. So is Spolster going to do that? Just just keep keep the rotations the way they are. I don't know because if that's the way they are, that's going to be Bosch on. Uh, that's going to be Collison on Bosch, and that's even worse than Abaka on Bosch. And you, if that happens, you might see Brooks uh, send Ibaka to the bench because you can't risk. Or Ibaka might be playing more minutes. Like, you can't risk. Uh, God, that's a huge advantage if they do that. Hmm. If they bring Bosch off the bench? Yeah. Because yeah. OKC okay, has nobody on their bench that can even... Kind of slow him down. Well, how, how many minutes does Ibaka play a game? This playoffs. He, he's probably going to have to play at least 35. Damn. You need, you need to start telling me. I need to pull up a stat first. Damn. No, you don't have to look it up. But, I, um, I, I don't see why Ibaka, he's, he's young, he's in shape. I don't see why he can't play more minutes. Uh, fouls. Oh, with the oh, foul, foul trouble, yeah. Yeah. That's probably going to be a problem. Uh, 
I you know Parkins that's another six fouls. Collison that's a six foul. Uh, it, it's it's a great point, and uh, the more you think about the foul problem. If if Ibaka does get into foul trouble and you get and you do have Bosch coming off the bench, that's uh, it's pretty scary to think about. Yeah, that, that is a huge advantage if they do that. I don't think they will though. I think they like the spacing way too much with him out there with, for Wade and LeBron. Because you saw it in Game Seven, Kevin Garnett did not leave Bosch, and if he did, he had a three, <laughs> yeah. which is something he added this year. And it appears this entire time he's been rehabbing has been working on even more because before he came back, he was only 4 of 20. And that last game, he was 3 of 4. Man. Yeah, man, he's he's a professional. I have to say he's uh, he, he's proven me wrong. I, I thought he looked terrible last year, but uh, you know, the, the, the guy is definitely a uh, first-class professional. Yeah, he's, a, he's also a much better defender than he gets credit for. A uh, completely derailed Boston, trying to come back in the fourth by swatting away that alley oop Rondo threw up. Uh, also had a block on Rondo in the lane. But yeah, I, now I'm thinking about it, Miami's probably going to win this on defense. Uh, Offensive. Definitely, and uh, yeah. I definitely think we have the defensive advantage. Uh, another thing I think we could bring up is the uh, the finals format is uh, two three two, which to me sometimes I think it favors the team that doesn't have the home court advantage because you, you go home for three straight games, and you know always the first two games of the series you probably always have a case where one of the teams is really nervous and you can c- kind of totally take home court advantage out of the equation, so. Um, I don't know. It, it, it's it's kind of weird. You know, last time Miami won the championship, they didn't have the home court advantage, and uh, they wrapped it up in six games. So, um, yeah, so what do you think about the uh, the two three two format? I don't like it. I like the two two one 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 better. Well, it's been like this since uh, eighty five. So yeah, but I, I wish they would just do it all the way. But I, it kind of makes it. So both teams get rewarded for making it to the finals, and I, I see why they do it. I, I, I mean, I, I think they do it for media purposes. You don't want to fly them back and forth. No. I, maybe that's why. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I think it, I think it actually favors Miami. Yeah, and I would I would diss their crowd, but in Game Seven they actually were a crowd instead of the in game, the, yeah in Game Five <laughs> they were terrible. God. They're they're usually always terrible, but game well, seven. The thing about Miami is it's like how many of these fans are, are bandwagon fans? All of them. They're not diehards, and uh, they're all from all over the country. You got Knicks fans there, you got Lakers fans there, Celtics. Uh, Cel- yeah, Celtics. It's uh. It's where old folks go to retire. It's not like Oklahoma City. Put it like that. No. Like that Chris is- said, they're not the best fans in, in the world. No. I don't, I don't know if that'll make a difference at all. Uh, kind of did last year when the Dallas fans in Miami were way louder than the actual Miami fans in that game six. Uh, man, kind of sounds stumped, and this is probably gonna sound boring, but yeah, I'm just having really, I'm having a tough time thinking through this series. But it's I ring, think uh, it's tough. It's only one yeah. series. It's not like we could talk about sixteen different series, like. No. Uh, all right. Yeah. And they've only played two games in a regular season. Home team won each one. So That's right. what, do you, what can you say? Nothing. Well, yeah. uh, o- all right. Uh, Oklahoma City actually blew them out in OKC. And from what I remember, the game in April, I think uh, I think Miami won by – shit. What, they won by like um, – did it go into overtime? Oh, God. Yeah, I don't remember. I, I don't think it did. I think they won by like maybe five or six. It was a close game. I think there was a uh, – wasn't that the game when Westbrook got a flagrant? Didn't he so, – something happened with Westbrook with the flagrant foul. I know that. It was a pretty memorable game. Apparently um, it's not since we can't remember anything about it. <laughs> but yeah. – uh, I mean, I, I guess we could kind of wrap this up. So um, would, would you say – I'm going to say um, Miami – I'm going to say Miami in six. 
I, I still don't want to set a prediction in stone, it's even tough, though it's tough to say because uh, you know going to a game seven and, and winning and. If they're good, they would have to win in Oklahoma City if uh, if it went to seven games. I, I can't see that happening. So I say Miami's got to take it in six, just like they did in uh, 2006. So I'll, I'll go with that. But uh, I'll I'll say Miami in seven, and just based on defense. And God, that shit. That's hard to think about. We didn't even talk this all the way through. It's just baffling. Baffling, baffling, baffling. Yeah, maybe, well, maybe if Stephen A. Smith could help us out, he would have. Oh, uh, no. LeBron James, <laughs> he's a good friend. Good friend, but LeBron James needs to take over. God, I hate that guy. And then he's advertising Prometheus on television. Like, oh, Who thought that was a good idea? Prometheus, prequel to Alien. Stephen A. Smith totally works. Uh, what? I don't know. That guy will be flip flopping. Whoever wins each game's the greatest team in the NBA. They they always the whole ESPN fucking staff. Every single game is when when Boston had the upper hand. It's you know LeBron can't LeBron and Wade can't play. You know the Celtics are just too deep. And then if, if Miami wins, it's the Celtics are too old. Blah, 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 blah. I've never seen people just totally flip flop after every fucking game. I mean, the only time uh, Celtics two all was true was fourth quarter game seven. They looked completely out of gas. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty depressing. Uh, I could, gotta give the Celtics credit though, man. I, to, to to think of what they did this year, and we even said that they were going to get hit hard with the schedule, and. Uh, but, you know, you did not want to play him in the playoffs, and uh, you know, they, they had a great run. And it it kind of seems to me like LeBron kind of wishes Doc Rivers was his coach. You see the way he was kind of salivating over Doc after that game? He was like, oh, man, Doc Rivers, you know, he's the kind of coach that, you know, loves his players, and, and you know, he's like a father figure. I don't know about that because those two guys shut down Pat Riley every time. Media brings it up. Uh I think they like Spo. I, I, think, I think Eric Spolster is like the new uh, Jeff Van Gundy, you know, kind of like the disciple of Pat Riley, hardworking, you know, you know, works all works all night, you know, studying tape. You know, that, that's that's who I see uh, Eric Spolster. Yeah. And he doesn't seem to get bothered by the media, which is a good thing. No, no, he could. De- he, he seems to deal with stress very smoothly. Yeah, I guess I'll say Miami in seven. Keep it there. I have no idea, people. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it, it's not bad. It, it was okay. I mean, it's. Uh, I'm sure a lot of other videos are kind of like this as well. Uh, some other guy just uploaded an hour and a half preview video. I'm sure that's not all glitter and gold as well. But, uh, yeah, I mean, let's pretty much wrap this up. So we say Miami in six. You have Miami in seven. Uh, you think LeBron's finally probably going to get his uh, championship. Who do you think is going to be the finals MVP? Uh, pretty much goes without saying. This, this is LeBron's time, right? Yeah, it'll probably be LeBron based on numbers, but I think Bosch is going to be the biggest difference maker. All right, yeah, I agree. And he's got his confidence back, too. Looks healthy. How's his health? Is he okay with the uh, the strained uh, did you, abdominal? Did you see him last game? Well, yeah, yeah, I, I saw the we saw the game, but... Um, he looked fine to me. He didn't look like Wade. Yeah, yeah. A big, big question mark is uh, Dwayne Wade. Dwayne, the Dwayne Wade Russell Westbrook matchup is um, a lot of work there. That, that's going to be tough for for both guys, but that's going to take its toll on Wade. Um, yeah, you want to wrap it up? Yeah, I, I guess I'm going to do the cheesy end where I say I'm going to hit the stop button and I hit the stop button. 